Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the relatively common electric steel type Pokemon Magnemite, its relatively rare evolution Magneton, the two collectively known as the Magnet Pokemon, and their exceptionally rare evolution Magnezone, the Magnet Area Pokemon. Though they might look a bit bizarre to those not familiar with artificial Pokemon, the members of the Magnemite family are powerful machines that can more than make themselves an electrical hazard to others. Magnemite possess a grey spherical metal body with a pair of small screws on the front of their form, a large massive one in the center of the top of their bodies, and a single large optical sensor on their front for observing their environment. The sides of their body are adorned with a pair of red and blue tipped magnets used to release electrical energy generated in their bodies. The evolved form, Magneton, have the same general body form as Magnemite, though their magnets and screws have been tilted in position or otherwise almost completely removed in order to keep them from touching the other metallic components of their forms. They otherwise resemble their pre-evolved form identically, existing as a trio of Magnemite that are bound together magnetically. Their final evolution, Magnezone, have a more unique form with a large central body form adorned with a large red-eyed optical sensor, the other Magnemite having fused to their sides. They have a trio of magnets attached to them, two in the front and a third in the back, and while the two side modules have reobtained the large central screws, the center unit instead possesses a darker gray top plate with a large yellow bulb tipped electrical emitter, which they use to both emit electricity and receive signals from afar. The Magnemite family possesses a rich and interesting history that, as the first modern artificial Pokemon, is more than worth noting. Near the end of the 19th century, the advancement of induction motors and AC current had paved the way for the modern technological world. But while some groups wish for a way to perhaps use this technology to create helpful robotic assistance for electrical experimentation, there was no manner in which to safely create a self-contained unit that could power itself. With the creation of Tesla's electrical resonant transformer though, this became a physical possibility beyond the wildest dreams at the time. As it turns out, an unknown research team had been watching Tesla from afar and realized that he had stumbled onto something beyond wonderful in his research. While well, AC current on its own is a convenient way of transferring power and the induction motor served as a hallmark for its use, safely using such currents was a problem without extensive equipment that would need interaction from an outside force to work. Tesla's coil, however, could turn a source of low voltage, high current electricity into a source of high voltage, low current electricity while still remaining in a compact enough form that it could be fitted into an independent module. This provided all the parts needed to create a machine that could transform low voltage power that would be relatively safe and easy for the machine to utilize into blasts of high voltage electricity that would be conducive to electrical experimentation. The research team worked fast and furious with these advancements and, after several hard years of labor, they finally created the first modern artificial Pokemon. Magnemite was born. While well, the early design of the species would seem crude by today's standards, Magnemite have changed very little over the years and are in fact the exact same as their original ancestor. An AC-centered technological system allows Magnemite and their evolutions to absorb large amounts of electricity from just about any nearby electrical source while the induction motor serves as the main unit for generating and transferring power throughout their bodies. An internal Tesla coil further allows them to convert the otherwise lethal burst of electricity they need to survive into high voltage but less immediately lethal blasts of power. Needless to say, the research group was ecstatic, but because they felt Tesla had actually been responsible for creating the device that made Magnemite possible, they declined to obtain a patent on their creation and instead gifted it to Tesla himself, thanking him for being a hero and granting him full rights to the creature's design plans. Shortly thereafter, Tesla filed a patent and was able to interest a few businesses in the idea of constructing Magnemite for the purpose of conducting electrical experiments, and the rest is effectively history. It is noted, however, that Tesla did make a slight mistake in that he merely assigned the species as a pure electric type. Decades later, the importance of the species' metallic bodies as they played into their typing would be taken into consideration and the species, as well as its evolutions, would be reassigned as electric steel types. As far as the actual powers are noted, these creatures are able to potentially keep other steel types from escaping the presence of their magnetic forms, or otherwise can use their armored bodies to withstand harsh blows, allowing them to have magnet pull and sturdy space abilities, while those that show more diverse artificial intelligence programs can instead observe the opposition carefully to target weak points and increase the damaging power of their attacks, allowing them to have analytic as a hidden ability. In terms of stats, in the case of Magnezone, these creatures 
are not the fastest out there, nor are they gifted with a lot of stamina or physical strength, so their base HP, attack, and speed stats are all below average for fully evolved electric and steel type Pokemon. However, their bodies are quite rugged and can withstand harsh blows of any kind, their base defense and special defense stats being above average for a fully evolved electric type Pokemon, and they're able to hit extremely hard with special attacks, their base special attack stat being above average for a fully evolved Pokemon of both of their types, and in turn, having the highest base special attack stat out of all non-legendary and non-UB electric type Pokemon, making them a truly terrifying force to face from afar without ground type attributes to protect one from the best electrical attacks. Magnemite generate an intense electromagnetic field around their bodies as a result of their electrical powers that effectively enables them to hover and fly because their field repulses against the Earth's. This repulsion is generally not enough to enable protection against ground type attacks, but by rotating the magnets on the sides rapidly, Magnemite can substantially increase the strength of their electric field to compensate for this via their magnet rise technique, even when they are sleeping upside down, in turn attracting iron objects from over 300 feet away. Because their bodies effectively run on high current electricity, even though the Tesla coil within them transforms it into high voltage electricity, which allows them to utilize electric type moves like Thunder Wave, it is very common to see Magnemite gather around major sources of electricity and drain it from them at a steady pace, oftentimes clinging to any metal towers that support power lines or attacking power plants if the lines in an area are buried underground. This is usually not a problem, as Magnemite do not require a significant amount of power to sustain themselves, though they will fall to the ground if they do run out of power and will need something like a battery to recharge. The fact that they tend to attack such sources en masse, however, does make them more than just a simple pest, and touching one's body while they're eating electricity will result in a full body shock. Moreover, Magnemite are not picky about where they obtain their electricity, and have even been known to leach power from the breaker boxes of homes, so there really isn't a place they won't go. As a result, major power stations will occasionally resort to emitting an electromagnetic signal that disrupts their internal functions in order to repel them. Nonetheless, actively draining power in this fashion is a regular activity on their part, as without a steady stream of electricity, these creatures will cease to levitate and will shut down. For trainers, this means that Magnemite can be difficult to sustain, but their impressive base special attack stat at such a young age can more than make up for it in the long run. As with similar families, Magnemite evolve into Magneton via one of two methods. Either they gain enough experience and power to replicate themselves two times before combining together, or three Magnemite bind together spontaneously in the wild. In either case, the minds of the individual units are combined into one in the process, though this does not make them any more intelligent. Unlike most evolutions, the Magnemite and a Magneton are only held together via their electromagnetic field but that is more than enough to prevent anything short of an intense magnetic storm from ever separating them. Interestingly enough, this also allows them to learn the Tri-Attack move immediately upon evolution, as well as the Electric Terrain technique, the latter of which is also shared by Magnezone. Unlike Magnemite, Magneton are a serious threat to trainers and humans alike, because the combined electromagnetic power of its three units is so strong that it effectively does two incredible things. First of all, any electrical device even remotely close to them will be instantly fried and disrupted. Secondly, their electromagnetic field can actually excite atoms nearby and essentially vaporize any water held to the ground or even an object, turning their surroundings into a dry wasteland within less than an hour and raising the ambient air temperature as much as 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit within a 3,300 foot radius. Together, these traits make Magneton a threat to both machines and living creatures all around, so many cities and towns near colonies of these machines were often sound sirens to alert people whenever a swarm is close to the town boundary. This is thankfully not a major issue though, as Magneton usually only gather in frightening numbers when sunspots flare up, likely in response to the dependence on electromagnetism for survival, and when rain clouds form, hoping that they would get the chance to absorb electricity directly from lightning strikes. Moreover, when large numbers of Magneton gather together, their combined electrical power is oftentimes strong enough to create abnormal and tremendous magnetic storms capable of disrupting radio waves and even generating their own to study their surroundings. Even being near these creatures is a bad idea, as their electric fields can disrupt brain function and cause painful earaches. Nonetheless, Magneton are powerful machines that can perform quite admirable against most types of opponents, so the usefulness is battle is not hindered by their inherent risks. It just means that one likely will not be able to keep their Pokemon outside of its capture device very frequently. 
Under normal circumstances, magnetons do not possess the capacity to evolve and are effectively complete on their own. When exposed to certain magnetic fields or the radiant energy of a thunderstone, however, something drastic happens. Under these rare circumstances, magnetons start generating an electromagnetic field so intense that their molecular structure begins to change and they draw in large quantities of metal from their surroundings, physically fusing their three magnemite units together, rather than merely being linked by the electric fields, into a solid cohesive mass, thus facilitating their evolution into magnezone. The inclusion of extra mass makes magnezone slightly slower than the pre-evolved form, but this loss of mobility is more than made up for with an increase in most everything else. Their new form allows Magnezone to retain the ability to use the odd try attack while additionally benefiting them by increasing the strength of their electromagnetic powers and enabling them to control them freely. In short, Magnezone have the ability to utilize the electrical power to manipulate the battlefield through a magnetic flux technique and generate energy shields in much the same way psychic types do, enabling them to learn the mirror code attack. Unlike Magnemite and Magneton, Magnezone rarely travel amongst other members of the same species because their intense electromagnetic fields can occasionally become so strong they can attract other nearby magnezone, smashing them together into an immobile heap that will not dissolve until the individual constituents can regain a neutral net charge. Instead, magnezone often travel in the company of magnemite and magneton and often act as group leaders within swarms, sometimes being mistaken for UFOs in the night sky in the process and leading to a belief among some that they originally came from outer space as their strong magnetic fields allow them to control these lesser units without attracting them with the same uncontrollable forces of the Magnezone. This benefits Magnezone and the Swarm as a whole when it comes to patrolling their territory, as the Swarm can tap into its combined energy to utilize radar to detect intruders in said territory, which is then quickly dispatched with attacks like Zap Cannon. Curiously enough, the manner in which they control these lesser units is sometimes demonstrated visibly, as the poles at the ends of their magnetic bars will flash on and off wildly when they are charging up energy with their group in preparation for launching a massively destructive rain of electrical energy. It is also noted that unlike Magneton, Magneton are actually able to contain their own electrical powers quite well and do not have detrimental effects on other life forms and machines in their vicinity, so they are essentially a non-threat to civilization. Though these creatures can occasionally generate magnetic fields so strong that they attract everything around them, reducing them to a mobile mounds of electromagnetically fused scrap metal. Unfortunately, this does not seem to be the case in the vice versa scenario, as more than one human has attempted before to see if Magnezone can possibly evolve in the same fashion as Magnemite. Electrically, this makes sense, as it is effectively nothing more than combining complete circuits together. In the case of Magnuson, however, evolution has so radically changed their internal structure that scientists today are still trying to figure out how they actually function. Needless to say, this means that these creatures are likely the ultimate and final evolution of their family, which is probably a good thing in consideration of how powerful they already are. Lastly, while most of the behavior exhibited by Magnuson is scientifically understood, it has been observed that these entities will occasionally transmit and receive signals to and from an unknown source in the distance while flying. The purpose of these signals and where they are being directed towards does not provide a clear understanding of these actions as the source itself seems to be empty space, leaving this peculiar behavior without a clear explanation. Though they might not be the biggest bastions of personality in the Pokemon world, the members of the Magnemite family are still potent machines that can more than give a terrifying shock to anything that tries to fight them. You may have to go to some lengths in order to get them to a fully powered state, but the effort can be worth it to see what these magnetically inclined creatures can unleash upon others in battle. Just do yourself a favor and make sure not to take out any electrical devices you have in their presence. Not only is it likely to get completely fried just by being in their presence, but if it puts out enough energy to attract them, you might find yourself in an awkward and potentially life-threatening situation when these mechanical terrors attempt to get close to you with high-voltage electricity spewing forth that you may have little to no protection against. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always a pleasure to help teach others about the world of Pokemon and the many facets of it that exist in both the world we call home and the world they call home. If you'd like, please leave a comment and subscribe and ring the bell to this channel to get regular updates on content and anything else that might be going on. You can find me and my written work on DeviantArt under the name Utitis and be informed of information and content uploads on my Twitter page and my Patreon page. Donations are always welcome. Always remember, the world of Pokemon is a vast and varied place and there's no telling what secrets might be hiding just around the corner. 
So keep watch, stay vigilant, and always prepare for the unexpected. Until next time, have a wonderful rest of the day.